everyone, Cody here. Welcome to RSG Outdoors. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how you can save some money and make some of your own sinkers. Uh, I'm shooting the video in what is still my disaster of a garage, so I apologize if the lighting's a little crappy, but I'm trying to make sure you guys can see all the important stuff. All right, so if you've watched a few of my videos, especially those where I'm doing any catfishing or striper fishing, uh, you probably see me using a very specific type of sinker, and they look something like this. Uh, this is a no-roll sinker. It's a flat but teardrop shaped design and I use two different types of them. I use some that I can clip on like this that have a brass eyelet in the top and then I use some that slide onto my main line like this that have a hole through them. Uh, in order to make these you need just a few different things. You need a lead melting pot like I have here. I'm not going to touch it because it's very hot because we're going to make some sinkers today. Uh, you'll need some molds. Uh, I use do-it molds. You can use whatever brand you want, but these guys are very reputable. Uh, I have a large number of these molds. I have four of them out here with me right now. And whatever ones I'm going to use, uh, just make sure you have all the stuff you need to make them work. If you're going to do the line through design for sinkers, you're going to need these pins. And these pins sit in these molds just so that you have a little slot here for your line to go through. You can see just like that right there and then when you close it up the pen is still nice and comfortable in there and lets you pull it out uh, you can make some of these yourself if you don't want to purchase any new ones out of pieces of clothes hanger but make sure if you do that you take a file a dremel some sandpaper or something and wherever you've clipped the ends you just kind of sand them down a little bit it'll make them a lot easier to remove and it'll also keep from burring up and scarring the inside of your line guide that your sinker has to have inside so you'll keep from scratching up your line if you use braided line or keep a braid keep from abrading it if you're using uh, monofilament or anything like that so the rest of what you're gonna need is if you're gonna do the eyelet design you obviously need some brass eyelets make sure you're using the correct size for whatever mold you're using and you need a source of lead so there's a couple different ways you can do that you can get wheel weights. Uh, older wheel weights work better newer wheel weights have a lot of zinc in them and it's gonna cause you a lot of weight that you're gonna have to remove. Uh, another source of it is old sinkers. If you have an old batch of sinkers that you're not using anymore, you have some that are pretty beat up, banged up that you don't want to use anymore, you can throw those in. Sometimes you can go to scrap yards and you can buy scrap lead. It's a little over a dollar a pound, it's like a dollar twenty-five cents a pound, something like that. Uh, that'll make you a few sinkers. Uh, another thing you can do is you end up with these. Now this might look like a sinker, but it's not. It's actually, it's the lead weights off of the lead line of a cast net. Uh, now this is why I always buy a cast net that has actual leads on the lead line, because then I, once I destroy the cast net, which is inevitably going to happen if you use cast nets, you're gonna get them caught on things, uh, trying to catch your bait fish. They'll get torn up over a year, over the course of a year, two years, something like that, and then they're just trash, but you can still make use of the lead line if you make your own sinkers. You'll also need a way to store any unused lead that you don't have, and that's where I end up with these right here. I just take a standard muffin pan. I go and buy them for like a dollar or two dollars or something like that at the dollar store and dump all the lead into this. I spray it with a little bit of oil so that they release pretty easily and then I can store them out of the way and they're not in the lead melting pot where they can cause damage or anything if they sit for long periods of time. You'll need a little spoon so you can kind of stir the lead up and remove any kind of slag or crap that's on the top. Uh, mine doesn't have a lot of that because this lead has already been fluxed and treated. And in order to if you're going to flux lead, you're going to need some wax. Now, this is a votive candle. I have a crap load of these uh, left over from my wedding, which was years ago, uh, and I'm still using them. You just need a size or a small piece, uh, one centimeter by one centimeter uh, piece of wax. Melt it in your primary melting apparatus. I don't necessarily recommend doing this in your uh, molding pot. Just do it in like a separate container. And just add the lit or add the wax in, stir it up really good. It's gonna catch fire, it's gonna burst into flames. The last time it did it set off my smoke detector up there. I don't know if you can see that or not. 
But yeah, add the wax, uh, it'll catch fire, stir it up really good, and remove any of the slag looking type stuff on the top of your lead. Uh, and that'll make you a lot cleaner pour. It'll keep your system a lot cleaner so you don't end up having to replace anything on your melting pot or replacing your melting pot as a whole because you've damaged uh, the spout. All right, so now that I've shown you what you're gonna need, let's go ahead and get some of this lead melted up. I've got a few of these lead weights from that lead line and my pot's already kind of full. I've got plenty of liquid lead in it right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and top it off because today I'm gonna make some six ounce clip on no roll sinkers. That's what I really need. Uh, I've been fishing five ounces and stuff like that and it's not quite been enough. I need just a little bit more. I have some six ounce sinkers, but not enough for all of my rods. I want to make sure I can even things out if I need to. So I need a few more of those. So what you're going to need, make sure you have some gloves, something to protect you from splashing lead, something like that. And also make sure you have some eye protection on hand because if you get it on your skin, it's going to burn, it's going to suck. You're going to need to get it off, get some cold water, treat it as normal burn. But if you get it in your eyes, uh, that's probably some permanent damage. So you want to avoid that. Use some sort of eye protection. Uh, you can transfer them by hand like so. Just make sure you have you know, a glove that's gonna be okay. And that bubbles a little bit because it's significantly cooler. Or you can take a pair of pliers, and grab all these little weights, and just you know, dip them in as you go. Make sure you're doing this in a well-ventilated area. I have my garage door and everything open. If the wind were blowing in right now, I would have a box fan set up to help kind of suck some of these fumes and stuff away. Lead fumes are very toxic. You don't want to be inhaling those if you don't have to. Uh, so make sure you're doing this in a well-ventilated area. Make sure you're using your safety precautions. Use your gloves. Use your eye protection. Uh, definitely don't want to get killed just by making sinkers. So let's go ahead and get all the rest of this lead melted up, and then we'll show you guys how to pour them. All right, so like I said, we're gonna make some six ounce no roll sinkers with a brass eyelet. And the first thing we need to do is get our mold. Uh, this one has a six ounce and an eight ounce slot. You can see them right there. Uh, we're only gonna be doing the six ounce slot. I have plenty of eight ounce sinkers. I don't need to make any more right now. It'd just be a waste of lead and probably end up melting them down anyway. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna oil up the hinge on the mold. Uh, I just use a little bit of Remington gun oil uh, it works fine. It's got a really high ignition temperature, so it's not going to burst into flames. Don't spray it directly around your melting pot. Pull it away a little bit and just kind of oil the hinge inside and out. Give it a second to seep in there. Set that off to the side because you are working with hot metal. Don't want it to catch fire. All right, everything seems to be working good. All right, now we're going to take some of our brass eyelets since this is the kind I want to make. To make six ounces, we need number two eyelets, just like so. Take my glove off here so you get a good view. Little thing right there. And we only need the six, so it goes onto this slot right here. Push it on there, it holds quite well. Close the mold up, it's not going anywhere. Have a little spout hole right there. All right, put our glove on. I use a small piece of aluminum to kind of prop up my mold. That helps me hold everything nice and steady uh, while we're pouring, so. Right. Very carefully. And then we lift up on the lever to start pouring the lead. Alright, we fill it all the way up to the top, we hold it level for a second, kind of let things settle out. You don't have to wait too long, it's a liquid metal, it's still going to be hot, but it turns solid pretty quick. Alright, we open up our mold, and there it is. Obviously I'm not going to touch it with my hands. Okay, now that one doesn't look all that great, it's got some wave lines and stuff in it. That really doesn't matter. Uh, the fish don't give a crap. All I need is six ounces of lead to hold to the bottom. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to clip off this little extra end here. Just drop it straight back into the lead pot. No big deal. I've just got a couple pairs of pliers here to kind of hold things, manipulate stuff. 
and I have an extra piece of wood that I know is more temperature resistant than my tabletop and I'm just going to lay that on there so it can cool. After you make a few uh, sinkers and you get the mold fairly warm, it will start to it'll start to perform better. You'll start to get less of those little waves in it. And the reason those waves appear is because the lead that's pouring in is cooling because the mold is relatively cool at the moment. That was our first pour, but they'll get better as you go. You don't want to do too many. If uh, the mold starts smoking or something weird like that, you're definitely going to want to stop. You don't want it to catch flame or catch fire because the handles are wood on these. But we can get a few going. Letting it settle for just a moment. It's good to go. Right up and out of there. And that's another close enough to six ounce sinker. All right, so I'm gonna get a few of these made up and we'll see how they turn out. All right, so we've got a pretty good batch of sinkers made up here. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, these can be a real money-saving tactic. Do it makes a lot of different molds uh, for a variety of different types of sinkers and weights. They even make molds for plastic lures if you want to get into that kind of thing. Uh, the way it can save you money, especially if you use heavier weight sinkers like sixes and eights like I do, uh, six ounce sinkers, eight ounce sinkers, if you go to the store and try to purchase them, you usually get them in packs of two, and those packs of two cost anywhere between three and five dollars. And I can go to a scrapyard, and get a pound of lead, which makes, you know, two, three sinkers uh, for just a little over a dollar. Now, there is initial investment in purchasing the equipment because molds are between 30 and $50. A melting pot like this is uh, between 50 and $90, I think. It just depends on what kind of models and stuff you go with and what capacities. And then you have to purchase little eyelets and things like that. Uh, but most of those are very inexpensive. If you choose to make your own sinkers, you will save money, especially if you're making larger sinkers or if you're fishing often and using them a lot. And plus, this is just a nice way to stay connected to your fishing gear, stay connected to your sport and your activities, and just you know keep you involved in the entire process of what you're doing. All right, everyone, we hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you go down below, click the like button, click subscribe, turn on your notifications so you get notified whenever we drop new content. If you have something else to say or something else you'd like to see, let us know in the comments down below, and we'll catch you next time on RSG Outdoors.